If you want to get a good quality best microphone for recording acoustic guitar according to your needs, then watch the video till the end and then decide to buy. There's not much to an acoustic guitar. A few thin slices of wood, a few thicker bits, some fret wire, half a dozen tuners and six strings made of nylon or steel. But glue and screw them all together and boy can it sound heavily in the right hands. It can sound pretty good in the wrong hands too. Picture Elvis absolutely hammering his acoustic on his seminal recording of That's Alright Mama at some records. Sounds perfectly imperfect to us, just as it should. Its rich timbre, complex texture and broad range can make it a tricky instrument to record though, which is why we're taking a deep dive into the best acoustic guitar mics. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Shure awesome Sem 81. Most mics that are used for recording acoustic guitar have arrived via a circuitous route that usually involves a drum kit, or bits of it. It's hard to think of two instruments that are less alike but what works well for miking up a cymbal usually works well for an acoustic guitar too. After all, it's all about capturing transients, clarity and that high-end shimmer. So, we acoustic guitarists end up using mics that are primarily marketed at drummers. The difference here is that Shure Sem 81 is, first and foremost, aimed at acoustic guitarists, albeit with a friendly, open invitation for pianists, drummers and string players too. Despite its slim, attractive body the Sem 81, in common with all of the SM family, is a rugged beast. It's built from tough vinyl coated steel and sure claim it's field usable over wide range of temperature and humidity conditions. As an acoustic guitarist, that's unlikely to be your primary motivation for buying it, but nevertheless it's nice to know that your fingers will probably stop working before it does. Of more interest is its frequency response curve that's incredibly flat. Self noise is very low, output is high and it exhibits minimum coloration, even off axis. In short, it's a dream to work with. Reproduction is faithful and its uniform, transparent character makes multi-mic setups a breeze. If close proximity recordings start to become bogged down in too much bass, there's a 6B or 8 B low cut filter to help your acoustic regain its position in the mix. There's a 10B pad too, but that's probably more useful for your drummer friends unless you're an aggressive strummer wielding a powerful dread. Moving on to the next at number 2 with Beer Dynamic Mo 160. A defining feature of ribbon mics is that they have a figure eight polar pattern, which picks up sound from two sides but rejects everything else. Back in the day, ribbon mics were very popular in radio studios because engineers could use just one mic to pick up two broadcasters, but they are equally adept at recording a singer-songwriter strumming their guitar or two vocalists singing a duet. Sometimes though, when you're trying to record one instrument with precision, the dualistic nature of the ribbon mic can be a bit of a drawback. You try to record just the guitar but you end up picking up everything directly opposite it too. Fortunately, the Moan 160 was born to tackle just this conundrum. It features a very tight hypercardioid pattern that can target just what you want to hear and little else. Even better, it sounds wonderful too, with a lovely bass response, smooth mids and silky highs. Since its introduction in the mid-1950s it has earned a glorious reputation for making strident, raw sources sound buttery smooth. Countless classic recordings have featured the Moan 160 miking up drum kits and distorted guitar cabs, but trust us, it makes acoustic guitars and other stringed instruments sound otherworldly too. Another characteristic of the Moan 160 is its unusual dull ribbon design, which boosts output and provides better signal-to-noise performance. Ideal for recording quiet passages finger-picked on an acoustic. The number 3 position is held by Newman K Moan 184 stereo set. First off, if the price is a bit of a shocker, don't worry, the K184 is available as a single mic too. But if you're tired of recording in mono and want to try more adventurous setups, then buying a stereo pair will save you money in the long run. The Cardio K184 is part of Newman's 180 series that also includes an Omni, the K183, and the Hypercardioid, the K185. All are known for their very natural, transparent sound and almost imperceptible self noise. The K184 displays almost no sound coloration over its entire cardioid pickup pattern and it's very successful at rejecting rearward sounds. These attributes are godsend in multiple mic setups because, by the very nature of stereo recordings, no two mics are going to be aimed at the sound source in exactly the same way. The lack of coloration across the entire pickup pattern means that a pair of K184s will sound consistent even if one is slightly off axis. This mic's almost fly frequency response curve does have a slight lift at the treble end, but essentially it's going to capture a very faithful rendition of your playing. 
This honesty can be a little disconcerting to listen to at first, but it's more desirable than trying to fix a poorly colored sound with EQ. With an ultra-low self-noise performance of just 13 BA, these Newman mics are ideal to record soft cut hear pin drop playing styles, but they can also handle high sound pressure levels of up to 138 B, making them good for the loud stuff too. Next at number 4 we have Shure SM57. The SM57, along with its non-identical twin the SM58, is one of the best-selling mics of all time. Quite simply it's a legendary bit of kit. While the SM58, with its ball-style grill and built-in pop filter, was originally designed as a dynamic mic for live divas and crooners, the SM57 did away with these vocalist-friendly features to live out life as an instrument mic. Other than these subtle differences, the two models are built identically but because the SM57's diaphragm is placed closer to the action, you're likely to encounter a slightly more pronounced proximity effect when using it. And, because of the way its grill is designed, the SM57 exhibits a slight presence lift too. Truth is, the SM57 is not really suitable for delicate, nuanced playing styles or recordings that aim to capture every little detail. Instead, it's most at home set in front of an aggressive strummer, picking up all of the good, rich percussive stuff while ignoring any unwanted high-frequency noise or low-frequency rumble. When you're done recording guitars, put it to good use as an alternatively voiced vocal mic or use it on stage. It's that versatile. When you consider the mileage you'll get out of the SM57, it could be the best value mic you ever buy. The number 5 position is held by SE Electronics Voodoo VR2 Active Ribbon Microphone. Nothing looks or sounds quite like the Voodoo VR2. Ribbon mics are known for capturing a very lifelike, yet rich sound, which, let's face it, is what most producers want. However, many can't compete with condenser mics when it comes to recording higher frequencies. They just don't have the required top-end response. Enter the Voodoo series from Messi Electronics. It has been developed by CEO and classical musician Suizu to have a wide frequency response from 20Hz right up to 20kHz. Not only that, but the response curve is not much of a curve at all. It's actually as flat as a pancake that's been run over by a steamroller. Twice. Okay, there is a very, very slight presence boost between 2kHz and 10kHz, but essentially this mic will capture everything and capture it authentically. Does this matter when an acoustic guitar's frequency range sits well within these parameters? Well, that's up to you. Some people prefer a little less top end anyway because that's where the handling noise sits. Others would rather capture the full performance so they can sculpt it to their heart's content with EQ. Another trick the VR2 has up its sleeve is active circuitry. Until relatively recently all ribbon mics were passive and require high gain, high impedance preamps in order to operate at their best. Active ribbon mics boast higher outputs in superior signal-to-noise ratios, doing away with the need for powerful preamps. This is important when recording quiet, delicate guitar passages because low-output passive ribbons can introduce unwanted noise. The VR2 may seem a bit pricey, but compared to most studio-quality ribbon mics it's surprisingly good value. The number 6 position is dominated by AKG C451B. The C451's excellent transient response, 20 B pad and modest size makes it a firm favorite with drummers miking up cymbals, hi-hats and even snares. It's incredible at capturing the snappy attack, the transients, at the beginning of a strike and for its ability to bring clarity to the highs without taking you on a trip to the land of brashness and fizz. Early on, some bright spark had the idea of trying it on steel strung acoustic guitar and discovered it worked its magic here too. It's particularly loved for bringing an exquisite shimmering quality to steel strung guitar, while retaining plenty of smoothness. If you're plagued by a dull, boxy-sounding acoustic, chances are C451 or 2 will bring enough clarity and brightness to lift it out of the mix. This is partly due to the C451's ultra-fine diaphragm and somewhat down to its pronounced presence bump after about 5 khc. In addition, the switchable low-cut filter that can roll off the bass at 75 hc or 150 hc will help to remove any muddiness induced by the proximity effect when close miking, letting that shimmer shine on through. Despite its fine diaphragm, AKG rate this mic as roadworthy, which means when you've finished in the studio it's tough enough to take out on the road too. That's all for today. We upload music product review videos in every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the upcoming video notification.